my name's Howard Wensley. I um, served in the Royal Air Force from 1980 to 1992. Um, I've done various jobs since, uh, but I'm currently not working, but looking for work. My name's Steve Horvath, commonly referred to as Taffy, the Mad Welshman, as the family call me. Pretty much what I was doing was, I was living my life the best way that I thought I could when I left the army. Uh, I drifted from job to job, couldn't find very much. Sean Tierney. I'm an ex-regular uh, soldier NCO um, in the British Army. And <clears throat> since then I've served with various PMCs, private military companies, um, as bodyguards, bullet catchers as they call them. I was fine, I was a happy-go-lucky um, teenager really. Um, I joined the Air Force at the age of 17. Um, it was something I'd always wanted to do. Because uh, I'm an ex-Royal Army Medical Corps medic, I was working in Northern Ireland in 1982 and I was stationed with the Cheshire Regiment in Ballykelly. And one evening, one Thursday evening, a uh, pile of us went over to the pub as per normal and some kind person decided to blow the pub up. Um, with my unit and the things that um, we were asked to do on behalf of Her Majesty's Government in places like Northern Ireland um, didn't bother me at the time because the people who, um, if you like, um, suffered at my hands and the hands of my colleagues were deserving of the treatment that they got because we were told that they were. And that night, uh, the 6th of December 1982, we lost eight members of the Cheshire Regiment. I was um, posted to bomb disposal uh, in 1982 after working on a specialist modification team, working on uh, cluster bombs. Uh, I was on the tank deck of the Sir Galahad uh, when it got bombed in the Falklands. Um, and um, as he moved away to not mistake in, the uh, bomb it went off. Um, it killed him. In hindsight, um, all these various events uh, had a sort of subconscious cumulative effect. After a week in hospital, um, I was sent back to RAF Wittering. Um, by this time I started having nightmares about it all and I spoke to um, an RAF doctor about it and he gave me a few tablets and said to uh, go out and have a few beers with me mate and I'll be fine. It took some time before I was actually diagnosed with the problem uh, and it was subject subsequent sorry, to um, a, a, a suicide attempt as a result of depression. Because I'd been suffering, unknowingly, I'd been suffering from PTSD since 1982. It was only diagnosed in 2005. And when I could no longer work out this inner anger because of um, my dis disablement, then these things built up to the point that I realised I needed help. Well, to begin with, uh, there was the nightmares, and then uh, after a few months, the flashbacks began. And to counteract the flashbacks, I was I was still single at the time. I started drinking. Uh, heavier and heavier as time went on. I went up to my um, local hardware shop and that's when I bought a roll of duct tape and a washing machine hose and then proceeded to drive down to my local fishing spot where I'd done an awful lot of my fishing and then spent the next eight and a half hours trying to gas myself to death. My marriage failed. Um, I left the army. When I knew I was going to have a flashback of a particular occurrence, so I used to go for either a long run at night, so therefore I was awake when these things used to happen, so they didn't happen, or I used to volunteer for night duties, so people never knew that I had mental health problems, basically. I wasn't getting any help from either the RAF or any, anybody else, really. So I was isolating myself. It's, it's completely and utterly for want of a better phrase, wrecked the marriage. At one stage last year, I said to him, right, for Christmas I want 
a divorce. When it came to the point, uh, so the day that he really became ill was he changed overnight. He literally became a complete stranger in our house. Major General Sir Robin Short, who was Director General of Army Medical Service and Surgeon General of the Army, who I knew of old, was the owner of the group that owned T. Wynn. And um, we'd become good friends. And about six months ago, he rang me up. He said, Sean, I'd like you to come across and meet this chap called David Waters, because he has got a technique that helps you release all these inner demons that I'm endorsing and I'd like you to be one of the guinea pigs that undergoes this technique. And within 12 hours of him being in Stoke, in his voice he was more relaxed. When he came home, he went to sleep. He slept a whole night. It was very easy for me. And all I did was just follow the steps. I've got a toolbox in here that has an awful lot of tools in it that I've learned from Dave and from the course that enable me to deal with situations that I've never ever been able to deal with before. And I totally gave myself over to David Waters and a five hour session, I didn't realise it had gone uh, on as long as that. He teased from me so many things that I had subconsciously hidden which were having this um, effect which caused my diagnosed complex PTSD. So the swing for me was, was big, it was quick, it was, by the time we got home, uh, a lot of those demons were put to bed and uh, they're now, you know, I, I don't have them anymore. Oh, it's like a big weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Um, he's more independent now, whereas before he relied on me totally. Oh, I can't put it in percentage points, but um, a totally different person, a totally better person. And it's the first time in 25 years that I've actually found something that is working. And the one phrase I always use is... I don't know how the process works, I don't know how the program works, but at the end of the day, I don't care. It is working. So this self-tapping technique, this emotional freedom technique that David um, espouses, and I've only had one session, I haven't done the complete course, has made such a tremendous difference to my life that I'll be eternally grateful to him. They do not take a lot of time to master. It's just a case of practicing and practicing and then fine-tuning the techniques. It is just an absolutely astounding technique. It's so simple but so hugely effective. So effective, in fact, that I've actually asked my doctor to take me off some of my medication. Military PTSD. No one is going to understand unless they've actually been in the situation. My advice would be keep an open mind to this technique. Um, I'm very cynical of things, but I kept an open mind and I found it has worked for me. And, you know, it, obviously it's personal between David and, and his client. Um, and you cannot help but benefit from it. Don't suffer alone. David's got this new therapy that really works. You want to get out there, get in touch, and I know he will be able to help you as he has helped us. I'm moving in the direction of getting back to being a married man. My God. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm beginning to recognise who I used to be yeah, and, and allowing that person the freedom to express himself.
My name's Steve Horvath, commonly referred to as Taffy, the mad Welshman, as the family called me. Pretty much what I was doing was, I was living my life the best way that I thought I could when I left the army. Uh, I drifted from job to job, couldn't find very much. Sean Tierney, I'm an ex-regular uh, soldier NCO um, in the British Army. I served in the Royal Air Force from 1980 to 1992. Um, I've done various jobs since, uh, but I'm currently not working, but looking for work. My name's Howard Wensley. I um,